current enforced policy to, to stimulate the birds. Because we thought if we are keep the same rate, 15 per thousand per year, there are many people who will So we decided to do something. We did something. That means that they attracted people by tax incentives for large countries. The importation, the bad, bad, the importation of counter devices was auto, was what prevented. Propaganda, marketing, huh? campaign, the public relation, praising the virtue of Russia. Having Russia is something good for the country. Abortion was banned. So every single thing we did yeah, was not bad, but that was From 15 to 40 per thousand. From 15 per thousand, we came to 40 per thousand. It's really very impressive result, right? In, in how many years? Yeah, it's the very first year. It's only for one or two years. Because it was in the, the very beginning of 60s, and even in 66, something like that, it was immediately jumped to this, uh, to this level. Fastest growing nation. Mm -hmm. Birth rate began to fall within a month. Why? Policy was there. People were, were very happy with the policy. They have taken all the incentives. They used it. System behaved wonderfully. From 15 to 40. The most growing or the fast growing nation. And suddenly, a few months, what happened? Birth rate began to 1970 reached from 40 to 20 per thousand. Even worse, in 89 reached 16 per thousand. The same as in the early 60s. So after almost 30 years, they couldn't solve the problem, although they got a very impressive result in the beginning. But after 30 years, they came back to the same problem. The same problem, almost. Social system has a system of policy. Social system is complicated, it's complex. Not everyone can understand the behavior of a social system. But this is what the government didn't do at the beginning. They thought people like a machine. It's linear. Here they didn't see the linear, they didn't see the side effect. And this was actually the behavior over time over around 30 years. Here, it was at the beginning, 1966, it was around the 15 per thousand. And then a few years, maybe one or two, jumped to 40. And then it started to go up and down, and even fall, till it was close to even 11 or 12 in 1994. So this was actually what happened. Yes. Sorry, which is the source? Yeah, it's, uh, there's a book uh, that they published in 2000 mm -hmm. about system thinking, system development, and the Romanian case was very fundamental. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, I didn't uh, try to make a problem. No, no, it's, it's real numbers, and it's real case, and uh, it's even inside. What happened? What happened? We, we need to understand complexity. It's a complicated system. We need to understand. Huh? So, what happened? This is the resistance of people. Resistance of people. People uh, use a alternative method for birth control. People uh, smuggled the contraceptive pills and devices from outside because the government banned everything. And even health problem led to death in the place. So, it's not only the birth that stopped. In the death rate increase. So let us see from a very simple description how can we describe this? Let us see. Population, how we increase population? Birth rate. Birth rate is the only factor that can immediately increase or affect population. Birth rate increase, what will happen to population? Increase. So if birth rate increase, population increase. Don't forget the feedback. If population increase, 
birth rate increased. People increased. So birth rate increased. What does it mean? It's a feedback, and with this feedback, it's what will happen. Birth rate increased, population increased. Population increased, birth rate increased. Birth rate increased, population increased. So if you take this forever, you will have a wonderful huh? pattern. Huh? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. So this is what we call the feedback, and we call it positive feedback. Why it's positive? To reinforce each other. Reinforce it. Imagine your mom in the bank behaves with the way. Nice picture. Nice. If it's your account in the bank, and here it's the increase of your income, uh, that means, yeah, maybe corruption, probably, I don't know. But at the end of the day, it's one way. Imagine that you are uh, building your business, and this is the number of your client. Your client increase, birth, this. Uh, While a new customer increase, and by people talking about the program, about the product, people get infected by the product, they increase, and so on. It's wonderful, right? But unfortunately, Definitely life is not like that. What will happen? That's you see the limit for God. You have a competitor. Your life will not increase. <laughs> if you have expenses, something about your account, your account will not increase, right? So not competitor, it's a partnership. So <laughs> So, when death rate increases, what will happen for birth rate? Uh, sorry, for population? Decrease, that's what it's negative. Population increase, death rate increase. Because when people increase, the number of people that die from this, as a percentage, they increase. So, this is what we call a negative feedback loop. It's feedback. So, this is what we call it balancing. And from here, this is exactly what happens in every society. In a population, you have two feedbacks, one positive and one negative. So people definitely will be, there is birth rate and there is death rate. Now what would happen in a many case? What happened? Government will look to this, they didn't look at this, they didn't even know that there was a feedback. They knew only one single thing, they knew when they increase birth rate, population increase. Story finished. They didn't know that the, the reason resistance. Okay. So they thought by putting tax incentive and propaganda, will when they introduce it, what will happen? Birth rate increase. Birth rate increase. But they didn't know that there will be some resistance, as we mentioned. Birth regulation is another it's one of the factors. And it has, in the hidden part, has a negative impact on the That's why this can explain the 40, from 15 to 40. And this explains the time that it went back to the news. Apparently, any, any country, I know, any country is spending something on that. In order to, uh, in order to decrease the death rate. This is a very simple architecture. Yeah, let me say that now. It's a very simple allegory of what happened in the complicated system. We simplify a lot. But this is one of the, the things that we can call it a structure. And remember, structure was a part of the anatomy of the human being. Anatomy was the, uh, the main objective, the purpose of anatomy, root of the nature. So the structure and function of the and here, this is the system structure. And this is exactly what we are doing. Usually, as a human being, we look to numbers. We look to patterns. And we think, or we look into the design. Same down, price, in degrees price, same to increase. So we deal with the values. Sometimes we deal with patterns of the values. Deal with a pattern of one year, one week, two years. But we are always on the surface. But 
if sales, sales of ice cream increases without a positive relationship between sales of ice cream and the murder rate. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It was too hard. The people. So there was another third factor that caused the sales of ice cream increase. And meanwhile, the rate of murder rate. So take care of this. And you like to build your own system. Think of the cause and effect. Okay, one of the very fundamental things in, in the process of system is to that. And this is exactly why people fail to solve or to take decisions or make a right decision. They don't, they overlook the feedback. And feedback, again, we have two things. Positive feedback, like this, or negative feedback. <coughs> so it's a very simple policy. It's a cause and effect, positive and negative, and feedback. Last thing on this uh, uh, structure, it is always triggered for the system. And it's your responsibility if you try to model system like this, is to find where the interface, where we are. Should the interface be here or here? You decide to the interface up where to intervene the interface. This is one of the most complicated things in dealing with complexity that you don't know where and how. Like the medical doctor. In our reality, we have to look to the system first. So usually you build it, and then you look at it where I can interview from the past. And very fundamental regulation. Very simple to see what is everything is just in time now. It doesn't mean just in time. It means the cause and effect happen at the same time. Boring. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. Life will be boring. Just imagine this. Huh? Very fast. Very fast. Any and this is a very trick yeah, if you solve this uh, question, uh, It's like, you know what, it's think of that, uh, you don't want to think, uh, while you drive home, uh, or you are going to a restaurant, today, uh, think of what will happen if everything is uh, uh, zero delay. Happen at the same time. My theory says, it's like you push, pulls to the light. You stop that, life stop. Right? Think of it. Life stop. Even if uh, God created us without delay, that would be, uh, be impossible to live. That's why God created us to have delay in our life. Delay is the engine of life. When I think about it, time, and this is my problem with the technology, working in mobile uh, industry, yeah. you are destroying life. <laughs> Why? Because the, the people expect that you are going to reply to their SMS or to reply to their call. They think technology made to make delay equal zero. <coughs> what happened? Delay equal zero. What happened? That you are, you have, what happened to you by, after using mobile? What happened? You have no time to think, yeah, and life became very quick, and you hate life. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I do in life, I don't have mobiles, I don't use mobiles. <laughs> it's not a joke, it's a reality. I don't use mobiles because of this. Because I think 
by having a mobile, you raise the expectation. You are accessible all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to reply. You have to respond. So that's why one of the things, one of the things yeah. that I decided not to have a mobile. Because they see, huh? You have to organize your, uh, your health. Oh, so you can prioritize. This is, uh, I, I will answer. This is not. Yeah. So yeah, they put more uh, effort. You, you <laughs> put a structure. Yeah, yeah, that's why I didn't want to uh, put effort on structuring the unstructured mobile <laughs> sector. I wanted to structure my life without mobile. We have an email address. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really true, because it's offline. Yeah. What, what does it mean offline? It means you don't expect that I'm going to reply to you. So I gain the time already. I gave my email address. Life is not uh, zero delay. Delay is responsible for fluctuation. You 
see any fluctuation in any system, you know, because of delay. Did, uh, did you see the pattern of any inventory? <coughs> huh? It looks like that. Huh? Why? Because of delay. Why in the economy there is this ups and downs? Because of the delay. Because we don't expect the cause and effect. We don't know. Because the, uh, if we have a zero delay in the system, it will be smooth, very smooth in the system. Okay. That's very quick. We have something like this, this is the positive impact. We will run very quickly, so they want to jump to another topic, but creative. Good thing is it's a negative impact. So you that more it can be more things or complicated. You have the uh, oscillation like this or flat motion, it means you have to make it. Means if when the decision makers they need to have data before they make a decision. So that there is a delay in measuring of it. The most important thing for you is to, to find the data immediately in order to make it easier. But unfortunately, there is also a delay. So the delay is the responsible for having this question. Then if we have the head shape like this and the negative, with the positive and then the negative. You don't need really to look at the details, but just to show you that even if you have a solution S shape, this delay became a bigger part in the system. <laughs> and so on. And collapsing, this is a very important thing, collapse of nation, bankruptcy of business, or even collapse of the individual, it's because of this. If we find a person who collapsed, because there are three If you find a business that was growing in a year, a group of that, because there's another feedback loop, that was responsible for the climate. Nation can collapse. Power can collapse. Regime can collapse. Why? Because all the time they are very busy with their power. And this part, this part, we don't know if there are other feedback loops that can stop them, and there's another power for feedback loops that can take them down. And this is a collapsing one. There is always, this is a, a very critical model, why in very simple terms. Can the capacity be in reserve? <coughs> Imagine this reserve is full. someone who is telling you to take care. The resources are not enough. Slow down. Mm -hmm. If you don't slow down on the right time and you still have the kind of capacity the same, the system will collapse. Now, in order to prolong that collapsing, you want to shift the collapsing. What you should do? You don't want to collapse here. In this time. You want to mm -hmm. shift the collapse. If this increase, the carrying capacity increases the level, the time that you uh, uh, sense that there is a uh, scarce of resources will prolong. So your collapse will be shifted. And this exactly, this is my, uh, as well, the interpretation of what's going on in, in, the, in the area of uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and so on. U.S. Why U.S. went to Iraq or went to uh, oil, right? It's oil. What else? It's nothing but oil. It was their reserve. They knew if they keep the same level of reserve, they are threatened to collapse. So what's the only thing for survival? Is to increase the current capacity. 
What is the factor of survival for any business? It's cash. If you don't have cash, you still have your your company is very wealthy, but you don't have cash in hand. What would happen for you? Yes. So the only thing that will make you really surviving is the cash in hand. Cash is the current capacity. To have cash you will not collapse quick. Will survive. That's exactly why we have three here, three factors. One is faster for growth, one for balancing because of competition, and one if the resources is already started to be eroded. Eroded means you started to take from saving. Imagine that you save each month or each year something in a bank. So you have access to your cash. If there is a crisis, what will happen in the crisis? You don't get income, right? But what if you don't have cash in the bank? You collapse because you will not find money to pay your employees or your fundamental needs. So then cash or carrying capacity is the key for survival. Okay. That's what the uh, just said. So System thinking, this is the way how to think of a complexity from system thinking. It's a feedback, delayed, cause and effect. It's another uh, part, it's another uh, uh, paradigm of looking at management, system thinking. Okay. Well, it's, it, yeah, system, it's, it's, uh, it's nothing but the parts connected to each other. System thinking is a paradigm and a methodology for complex situation underlying business, economics, scientific, and social systems. System thinking is always there. Remember, system thinking, to think in a system way, you have to capture the delay. You have to capture the cause and effect. You have to capture the feedbacks. If you don't see them, you cannot deal with it. So it's your responsibility as a decision maker is to look at this. System thinking, view the organization as a whole, not as a part in an integrated way, in terms of the pattern, in terms of the functions, and so on. Scope of system thinking can be used in design of new systems, new product, or engineering. It can be used for predicting, prediction of behavior of complex systems under different value conditions, understanding the interaction of components and subsystems, like what we mentioned in a uh, uh, system like the uh, Indomanian case, it can be used for developing a certain strategy for a company. It can be used for building different scenarios and learning organizations in the area of HR. It can be applied on all levels, nation level, industrial and sector levels, organization level, and industrial and individual level. So it can be used for all what are the benefits? Can deal with uncertainty, can deal with complexity, identify fundamental causes and solutions to current problems. So there are a lot of benefits of using system thinking in defining our complexity. System thinking provides a tool for understanding complex and dynamic decision making, as we mentioned. So this is the kind of uh, summarizing reading what we got so far. It's a uh, this the uh, diagram that you remember the cause effect diagram and cause effect diagram? I mean the feedback. This was the current CLT cause loop diagram. Cause just has a lot of cause effect and delay as feedback. Okay. It's uh, like any project, like anything, you start with the problem in building your hypothesis it means your theory, remember the process of understanding, and then try to formulate the system, the model, and then test it. And then if the test is okay, you can apply the results or you can implement it. So it's all about simulation. It's a system that can be simulated to the computer. I can show you later on what I mean I can send you a link that you can build the model not just on a graphical representation but still you can run it on the computer if you have it. 
And if you run it on the model, you can simulate, you can make decisions on the virtual life. And if you find it, it's okay, you can take it into reality. The causal diagram, as I mentioned before, and one of the things, yeah, the very famous uh, person that this is not Peter Singh, I don't know if you heard about him or not, but he is the one who introduced this thinking with his colleague at MIT, and uh, he is the one who uh, wrote a wonderful book in 1990 called Learning Organizations, the art and practice of learning organization, diff discipline. Did you hear about diff disciplines? It's about system thinking. It's a wonderful book, although it was written in 1990. The second edition was in 2007, I think. But it's very considered last uh, maybe month, it was considered one of the best five books in the business education. So I would suggest to read Peter Singh as, or maybe if you Google, you will find that he's a wonderful person and a wonderful author. And think. Okay, let me just, yeah, uh, here it's a deleveraging point. What does it mean, leveraging point? We are not looking for short term solution. We are interested in long term solution. This is difference between problem solving and leveraging. This is exactly the difference. Leveraging means by very simple or small action can last the model for long. But problem solving means pain relief. You take a short term solution. But if you look at the fundamental problem, you will have the leveraging of the system. So, insistent thinking promotes the idea of leveraging and not the idea of problem solving. Because why problem solving will be as a byproduct? When you think fundamentally on the problem level, you will already solve the problem. So, and from this perspective, the people at MIT in the US, they found that there are a lot of situations can be structured in a form like template. That means what happened, as uh, your colleague had mentioned, what happened in Romania happened everywhere. So there is a template that can really work everywhere in the same way, but the only thing is the dynamics different. So this is what we call archetypes. So archetypes are just an idea of trying to see a template, see a pattern. Okay, I will just uh, very quick that they have names. Fix that fail. It's like uh, we always take actions. If you have a desired state um, and current state, that means this is what you want to achieve in terms of sales. You want to achieve something. And this is the current state. It's less what you are going to do. There is a difference between what you want and what you achieve. There is a difference. And the difference is not for your favor. You are going to make more and more effort. So you take actions. But you, and you push your feet to work more and more harder, right? Because you want to achieve it. But you don't know that after a certain time, your people will be burned. They achieve in the short term. By having this, they achieve in the short term, the quarter. But after a while, unintended consequences will appear. People will not make it anymore. So this is an archetype that can happen for everyone. You can, on the personal level, you can see. On the nation level, you can see. On the, the, the business level, you can see. There is another one called shifting the burden. Shifting the burden, it means we're usually interested in symptomatic solutions without solving the fundamental solution. This is exactly like pain relief as well. When you have a headache, you take pain relief. You will never look at the fundamental solution, which is why, why, why you have this pain. Why you have this pain on a personal level and why your business cannot really make it. So it's always a decision maker, you don't have time to look at this, right? We always want to solve anything. They tell you, bring me a solution. 
give him a solution. The solution has a very positive and attractive impact on structure and environment. After a while, you don't know what you want to do. You come in a little bit of peace. Why? You never know. You never know that the family is not peace. You always try to solve the symptoms. This is very fundamental to you. Another one would have the thick one to put here and it's working in the body. It's not good for you. 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 Money is good. But if you don't have to do it. Resources. You are limited in resources. In terms of power, in terms of people, in terms of anything. So if you don't look at it, you will take more than you can afford. So you hurt your business. And this is a fundamental pattern, an archetype for collapsing or bankruptcy of a lot of business who started very impressive, generated a lot of money at the beginning, and suddenly they disappeared. Why? Because they have taken a lot, a lot of projects, a lot of clients, and they don't have enough resources to do it. And they cannot afford the resources. So they die. Okay. The tragedy of the comet. It's another archetype. What does it mean, a uh, tragedy of the comet? Because it means, imagine, uh, yeah, in the wonderful uh, Bucharest uh, traffic, uh, uh, the guy that uh, I, uh, the driver, I came with uh, the guy, uh, uh, the taxi driver, he told me, yeah, I don't understand uh, uh, the way he it doesn't get into the language, but we were fantastic in time language. Mm -hmm. We found the text today, I, I found him because I gave him uh, the address here, uh, the text is okay, the room. and then we found immediately after the hotel out, I found that it's again. We tried every effort to tell me we will stop here for hours. I told him, I don't understand, but do hear me. Do anything. He did okay. I was. <laughs> I told him okay. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a positive thing. <laughs> it looks like it has to do with the time. So I decided go ahead. <laughs> he went for a funny, a very empty street. I knew how to you know. And after he found it, after he reached a certain point, he looked at me, he said, GPS. <laughs> 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 of course, I told him, the maker of the GPS he was very proud, and he wrote in a paper that, that he was uh, driving since 1973. So he knew that. Definitely, the first thing came to my mind this tablet. Imagine if I, this guy tells everyone how to get from my hotel to here in the same street. What will happen? Generally. So, the tragedy of the comet means that people still think the same way. So, after a while, this taxi driver, his GPS will be gone because everyone will go in the same direction and the traffic jam will appear again. So, it's a shift. So, it's the same as you do in your business. If you start a new business, you think no one will start this business. In this sector, as an entrepreneur, you go and you try to uh, uh, penetrate the market, and suddenly the market stagnates. Why? Because the trust of the economy happens. So, system thinking can immediately give you the pattern of what could happen, and then you make your choice. Okay, this kind of textbook and software that can be used, I uh, I decided, yeah, with your colleague, he asked for the presentation. I will leave the presentation per email to the team here. They will send to you, you will find some interesting titles, you can update them if there are other positions. But this is the okay. case. I think I still have. Okay, I will show you only two things. Only two things. Just to show you. Uh, system thinking can be used not for simplicity like that, not for, not for archetype, but for other things. Yeah, of course. 
This is the simple thing. Yeah? This is the simple. Okay? This you can use for sales. Okay? And this can be used for network and compatibility effect. Another model for product differentiation. Another model for new product development. Another model for monopoly in the economy. And so on. So it's a self-reinforcing and graph through acquisition. Here it explains why there are a lot of acquisition and a lot of merge in the industry. Okay. Let me system thinking application. I will show you two applications, but from I was planning, in fact, to explain to you the complexity of the model. I will not talk, but I will show you how we can build a model from simple relationship to a full model of crisis. Irrespective of what the crisis was, uh, what was the reason, what happened, it's not important because I'm not really uh, uh, going to talk about crisis, you know, live with it, still there. So, but I will show you how system thinking can do it. This was some facts about crisis. We will find it, we will not talk about it, but I will jump immediately to point where how you build the model. If you are model builder of system system thinking, you will see how model can be this was uh, actually a bailout uh, uh, stimulation of uh, the economy in all in the, in the world, in UK, in US. Uh, this was in UK and definitely in US there was things. You know what? In the in, in the in the time of the crisis China and India were the best two countries uh, in terms of uh, health of uh, economy. The, the rest of the world were, were in negative in terms of GDP. This was actually, yeah, people are losing their jobs in the US, they cannot pay mortgage, they cannot. But one of the, the guys at that time he said, you have to, at that time, go and buy gold. Uh,
speed like that. I get to you, huh? And then, yeah, you get a small face, you get more and more taut and fat. And then, you build cores and fat, and then you get the final model. This is actually the final model for what happened for the crisis. And this actually explains the consequences of the crisis. And uh, it explains as well what should have been done in terms of uh, uh, context. So this is one model. The last one, yeah, it's okay. So, because this is just to explain the intervention and from which one. As for evolution, it's only two minutes. You remember, uh, there are always reasons for inner evolution. You know it. Definitely. No term of perimetal system of over 30 years. Definitely. Deterioration of all kinds of legal and political conditions. Huh? It's typical, huh? a typical template for any kind of thing. Uh, police for the state of emergency law, the lack of free elections and freedom of speech, uncontrollable corruption. All such a thing. The <coughs> focus on the economic crisis, including high employment rates, uh, food price inflation, and global labor trade. As a result, all pressure, mostly internally and supported by externally, Mubarak had on Friday the 11th of Friday, uh, February, set down as a president. How is this thing considered? This is the 30 years, this moment is considered the 30 years of Mubarak including the same problem, including corruption, including, and this is what they call the virtual world, which the world between Mubarak regime and the people of the On the other side, this is the virtual world. On the other side, the frustration of the increase of people. And this is the increase, the increase of people, the uh, increase of people, frustrated, one of them because of the oppression, and the lack of national media, and so on. So there was an increase of people frustration, and frustrated people, and increased the rate of activists and protesters. At the, uh, at the past, there was protesters as well, but everyone went to jail. This time mm -hmm. it was too strong by, uh, by putting two together, it explains the revolution of what happened in the last years and on that revolution of Tunisia. So it was the virtual world of the world that was pressured by Tunisian revolution triggered. Remember, you need a trigger in your system. And in our system, the Tunisian revolution was the trigger to trigger to let people go to the street, go there in the Hanif Square and try to increase and put some pressure on the regime. Definitely The increase of protesters. Yeah. For explanation, yeah. colors doesn't say anything, but for just explain. Uh, army roles was very fundamental, and this may be differentiated between the revolution in Egypt, in Tunisia, and in other Arab countries. The army role, and then the external pressure from the whole world. Altogether, experience pressure on Mubarak to fall. Thank you, and I hope you now understand the text, understand this thinking, and you see how this thinking can be used in different aspects the revolution, in crisis, and even in the individual. Thank you very much for listening. I'm sorry I have